Okay. too bad for a first go was it i think we were cute well, it was good yeah it was there good there we go well thank you very much for uh popping by tora it is lovely to see you again can you, you believe it ladies and gentlemen it has been five years since we last saw you yeah. uh you haven't aged a day that's not true but thank you it's very true yeah okay um and so we have a little bit of covid to talk about is everyone bored of covid to yeah i mean we, but pretty bored well, yeah. right but yeah. tough time for musicians then we can talk about the album that you wrote then. Yeah. And we can talk about some of the dates that you've been doing since uh, the whole scene opened back up again. Yeah. And we want to talk about gear and life, the universe and everything. So tell us about the album that you wrote during COVID. Right. Well, I had a lot of time. Yes. And I had a lot of ideas. And I thought that I should use this time to be productive as much as I can. Yeah. And what I ended up doing really was trying my best to get into this whole producer role more. Okay. So I worked in Logic like nonstop, trying to make things sound decent. Mm -hmm. It did not sound decent, <laughs> <laughs> but I really tried. And at the end of COVID, when things started opening up again, all of a sudden it was like, okay, this is starting to sound pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So I could make demos that sounded like I wanted the song to sound like. And that made me feel proud of myself. 
Were you playing everything yourself at this point or just asking musicians to send their parts in? And... No, no, no. I did, I did everything. I didn't play drums. Mm -hmm. I used like drum loops or whatever. Uh, but I played bass and guitar and all of the vocals. I played keys sometimes. Uh, so, yeah, but also my producer did like the, the heavy work mm -hmm. at the end. But uh, I did pretty good. And the song we just did, is that that's one of the ones from that album? No, that's that's an older one. That's an older one, is it? That, okay. Yeah. So in terms of stylistically, what was the new album? Did it have a different influence or was it still quite sort of rootsy bluesy or? It was definitely more pop. Mm -hmm. I had I had like this desperate need to to be more like Michael Jackson than John Mayer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, and I, I wanted to write the songs I wanted to write without thinking about like genre or what box yeah. people want to put me in. Uh, so I, for me, the album is just, it's just free. Right. It's just freeing for me. Mm -hmm. And I think every single song is a masterpiece. <laughs> Modest as well. <laughs> um, no, it's good. So now I, even then, we've not jammed for, you know, five years or whatever like that. Yeah. And it, as you were playing, it reminded me of kind of some of those fun conversations we had last time about John Mayer and how, you know, our sort of shared uh, sort of love of, of, of his playing. Mm -hmm. What do you, you know, how do you think your playing styles developed over the last five years? Have you found other artists that have inspired you or are you still, you know, you're still yeah. very much in that kind of, you know, bluesy poppy kind of reign? Yeah. Hmm. I, I think what I've, what happened personally is, is that I've, develop more of my own style. And I think that I'm uh, more calm in mm -hmm. my playing. I, like, you know, that youthful nervousness, you know, and that vibrato that's kind of always, um, I'm more confident mm -hmm. in my playing because I've been playing a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so that feels really good. It, it took uh, many years, but I don't know influences. I don't really listen to guitar players that much. It's, I'm not a, don't listen to music. No. No, I don't like music. Yeah, I don't like it's, music. That's not for me. It's not um, my thing. No, I, I think I listen to, to more pop music, really. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting. I'm. You said you know you felt maybe you wanted to be more Michael Jackson than John Mayer like that. Sometimes I think <laughs> recently John Mayer wants to be more Michael Jackson true than though. John Mayer. Very you know, true. It's like, it's, at the end of the day, it's all about the song, right? It's you all know, about the song. Everything's about the song, and if there's some interesting guitar playing on it, that's fine. But if you take away the song and you're just left with the guitar playing. Yep. It soon isn't very interesting. That's right. Um, well, look, so album came out, yeah. uh, which is great. And then you started touring that and playing it and all the challenges of, of getting around post COVID. But what have you done? What has the band done over the last year or so? We have been very lucky. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing that with COVID, what happened for us was that, you know, we couldn't, festivals couldn't book bands from outside of the country. Yeah. So they had to use only Norwegian bands and artists, which was good for us. Mm -hmm. So we, we played so much, like we've had, the best summer was 2021 and also last year, like constantly nonstop playing. Good. And I think we're noticing now that the bigger bands are kind of coming back and we're like, okay, you're not getting the biggest stage anymore. Yeah. But it was fine, you know, it was cool for us to feel like rock stars for a moment. Uh, I'm trying just to, we're just trying to stay busy. Mm -hmm. People like what we do. That makes me really happy. And we have a, we have a good show. Oh, good. Yeah. Now, I know you've got a, a, few, a couple of dates coming up in the UK uh, at the end of the summer. Yeah. One in Guildford, uh, sunny Guildford, and the other in London. Right. So we'll put links to where you can find out about that. But what, what's the whole tour? Are you out for a long time or? No, that uh, we're doing those two dates mm -hmm. and we're doing one in France. Uh, so that's, the thing is, it's the first time we play outside of Norway. So. That's a big deal for me. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to happen in 2020. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it didn't. Well, I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> so when you're, when you're sort of touring, how many of you are in the band? In the band, we are five people on stage and we have one guy who's doing the sound thing and then on the lights. So we're seven people usually. So that's quite an expensive tour to sort of stay on the road, isn't it, like that? Yes, it is. But do you think you might, um, right now, there's, so there's a gig in France and a couple in the UK, is there likely to be any more dates announced? Or is that depending on what uh, Hilda can Yeah, we do? should probably ask, <laughs> ask the boss, my manager. I think, uh, uh, you know, financially, it's, it's a risk to do yeah. that for me personally. Yeah. So I will just, we're starting out three shows, yeah. just see how it goes. Yeah. But it will definitely not be my last time in the UK or France or whatever. I want to play everywhere. Mm -hmm. 
all the time. Good for you. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about, I want to sort of talk about, I suppose, playing and gear. We've got some new guitars that, uh, they don't look new, but they're obviously new to you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of interested playing style wise. The song that, that we just jammed was a, you know, kind of a relatively straightforward sort of progression like that, but yep. the, the, you know, the two major chords in there give it a slightly different vibe. Yep. What's on the new album? Just like, as in, are you yeah. still, is it still very sort of guitar based with a guitar solo or, you know, what? No, it's not. Okay. Like, and I think that's, it's difficult for me to like choose a song from the, from the new album to do by myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can, but I don't want to. Okay. Uh, they are they are different than my older songs. They require me to really really kind of arrange them out on the guitar and, and put some effort in. And mm -hmm. I haven't yet. I will, but uh, yeah, They're bigger songs. They're just bigger songs. Right. You know. Big bigger arrangements. You right. Know? Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Um, well, look. Let's talk about gear. Um, you've turned up with two guitars, which is cool, and then your really simple amp setup, just yep. a clean uh, with a tube screamer on the floor. I'm not even sure you used the tube screamer, did you? In the... I did. Uh, I did you on the solo. Fine. Yeah. Fair enough. Mm. So tell us about. Um, I'm going to go with my bestest French pronunciation here. Marceau guitars from northern France. Mm -hmm. um, how did you meet these guys? Not a brand that I'm familiar with. So how did you meet hey. them? Well, they, they, um, Tom. The, the boss mm -hmm. <laughs> contacted me on Facebook, I think it was right before COVID, and he was like, yo, can I make you a guitar? And this was at the point where it was like, everybody wanted to send people who played guitar on Instagram things, like so many pedals and amps hmm. and guitars, and it got to a point where I was like, that I don't have any more space in my yep. apartment. It's filling up. So when he said, can I make your guitar? I was like, no, Tom, you cannot. <laughs> so I didn't answer him at first because I thought I don't, I don't want to get anything more, you know? Ended up answering him and he turned out to be a really great guy. So we're like good friends. Mm -hmm. And I was nervous when he, uh, when he sent me the guitar. I was like, what if I don't like it? Because it has my name on it. Yep. And I thought it would be a sad story if, if I don't want to play it. Was it inspired by a guitar that you'd had? Did you sort of, did you give him a, a pointer around saying, look, I, you know, I've got this old 60s Strat or, mm. you know, these are the players that I like? Or was it just a, a real piece of luck? No, I, I knew that I wanted, I wanted it to be black and soft relic. Um, I, I didn't want it to look like the John Mayer, the black one. I wanted it to be different. Um, I always dreamt about having a, a black strut and mm -hmm. uh, I think it's, it's beautiful. It is nice. I mean, it's, it's, I'm just trying to, I don't know the, the spec on here for sure, but it's, it feels like a slightly more angular kind mm -hmm. of body design, not quite as contoured as a, as a regular strut. Different kind of heel joint, sort of yeah. more uh, contemporary heel joint. Mm -hmm. I was interested in the trim. The trim is really nice on here. It is. And you were saying that they make all these themselves, they do, do they? And tell me about the pickups though, because these are all made by them as well, aren't they? They are. And that's, that's the, the, the cool part, you know? They make everything at the workshop. Uh, and I, was, I visited them last year, mm -hmm. and I saw how everything was made, and I didn't understand anything, but I had really fun. And it, the neck, if you turn it too, it's like flamed something. Flame maple, I guess, isn't yeah. it? I mean, it's a beautiful, it's a sort of a C shape, kind of lacquered neck, not too rolled here. It's got a kind of a vintage vibe to it, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, you should, you take that and then you can give people a couple of notes out of it and of we'll um, talk about the, wow, that is a bigger neck on the Telecaster it though, is. right? Yeah. Sorry, the guitar that looks like a Telecaster but isn't actually legally speaking one. Um, so this was a like a follow-up. Tell, tell us about what was the story behind how you got this one? Well, um, I had this one for like about a year mm -hmm. and I had a telly that was from a different brand. Mm -hmm. And I used that for the song we played in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tom saw that and he was like, you, I would like to make you another guitar that you can use for that song. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. Uh, and I, uh, this, I think this is like a piece of art. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I mean, it's a, it's very much obviously inspired by an, an old uh, tele, Telecaster guitar, isn't it? Yeah, but it is. I noticed both fretboards have got this kind of like cutout piece yeah. of the last fret. So you guys maybe you can't see that on on camera now, but the the the, the final what is that like the twenty first fret or twenty second fret or whatever mm -hmm. has had a, a piece of it. Um, routed out and then stuck back in again so i presume there's something underneath here is there yeah i presume so but we don't know what we'll have to ask marceau maybe to, uh, it's drugs could be your I secret don't... compartment i wonder if it's something to do with like a way you can pick, I should you know probably adjust know. The, the, the the angle of the neck or something like that yeah give us some um have a guitar cable thank you give us some tones on there maybe in fact we can have a little another little noodle or something like that of course. I shall stop there. I've always liked in your playing, and I see this a lot when I see you on the video, are the little kind of, um, you do the little sort of single fret chromatic kind of, uh, little, you know, yeah. slides like that. Where did that, um, is that something that you're consciously doing? In fact, your whole playing, is it, what was your learning, you know, is it all self-taught or is there a sort of a, when you're playing, are you consciously thinking scales and modes or are you just going wherever your head sort of thinks? Well, um, I think um, it's boxes in my head, mm -hmm. I think it's what it is. Uh, and also just like learning stuff from the people that I look up to. Mm -hmm. I think Chris Buck is probably the one that I've really studied mm -hmm. um, the last years. Um, and I just, you know, learn, learn really like, I'm trying to learn the basics and the music theory around everything that let's say he does so i can understand you know the bigger picture mm -hmm. sorry my english is really really bad no right this now. is good but, but yeah is the is the playing without a pick is that a chris buck thing that you're trying to because i know he sort of interchanges a lot and I, a yeah, lot of his sound is that slightly softer sound of you know using a finger rather than a pick on a, on a note i think i'm I, i'm i got to a point where i was so tired of the, the sound of the pick right I was like, like ah, so it's it's softer, it's better, and I like to switch because mm -hmm. it's two different worlds for me, and mm -hmm. I think it is for everyone. Um, it's the dynamics of it that I really like. I just wish I could play really fast, but with my fingers. But Do I you can't. know what? The one thing I've not managed to, I don't mind. I'm, I would say I'm not. I'm I'm more comfortable with a pick than I am without. But the one thing I can't do, which all the really good players can do, I know, is to hide the, is to like, is to hold it. <laughs> and then go back to holding it and then holding it. It's like a magic trick almost like that. I need, I need to sort of put my pick somewhere and then I'll be playing and then I'll drop it on the floor and then it will ruin. Yeah, I know. So can you explain what you mean by playing in boxes? I think I know what you mean, but yeah. I'm just for the people out there that maybe aren't sure what you mean by that. What, right, what? I think if like, if you're in E, mm -hmm. I know I have E here. That's the first box for me, mm -hmm. kind of the deep one mm -hmm. that can also go up here. And I know that. So I have them both. Uh, and this is the, you know. That's the other box. Yeah. And if I want to get blues, I have this box. Just, and yeah. I think that's, I mean, I'm not, I don't think I'd call it playing a box, but I, 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 I'm the same. I know the shapes. Right. And, and, when I'm when someone says, "Oh, this song's in a different key," mm -hmm. I'm just I, all the shapes. I just know, okay, well, the shape it was there, now it's here, but it's still the same. It is shape, isn't it? Like yeah. That. 
Where do you think, I mean, in terms of a playing point of view, how do you try to expand on uh, what you're learning? Are you, mm-hmm. are you just, is it just practice and experimentation or is there a sense that you, uh, you know, I know for myself now, I, I'm trying to, I'm really trying to understand how I can play over the changes differently mm-hmm. so that, you know, you've, you know, that D, the chord with the thing we play at the beginning, yeah. It's got three chords in it, yeah. but I'm only ever playing D minor, yeah. sort of, you know, mm-hmm. pentatonic kind of shapes. In it. And, I, and I kind of feel like I want to force myself to try and find other shapes or boxes or whatever you want to call them mm-hmm. to play over, over the other two chords just to sort of feel like it. Definitely. But how do you, you know, where do you, how would you approach kind of just trying to expand your um, understanding of that? Yeah, well, I, I agree with you. I think that, like following the chords is the... It, it can be magical mm-hmm. and it can be surprising mm. when you, if you don't do it for a while and all of a sudden, like if you're in doing that, let's say you're in an A, right? And you can do like, just get That's a straight blues thing, yeah. but it's still over the chords. Yeah. Um, but I, I like to not do it until like the end of the solo. Mm-hmm. So people might think, oh, you're just playing boring blues. No, I'm not. Wait, wait, wait for it, you know? It's, no, it's cool. It's, it's definitely something everybody, I think, kind of, it's the natural progression, I think, for anybody that's stuck in that kind of rut of just play. You just got to try and force yourself out of it. And it is quite yeah. uncomfortable. Because mm-hmm. I think the worst thing is, is that you know that the lick that you're about to play works for some of the chord progression. But yeah. there's always that sense of like, when I'm about to play it, I hope it works for I the, know. the bit that <laughs> yeah. I'm in now, otherwise it's just gonna sound horrendous. So, I know, it's, oh well. it's, it's a risk. It is a risk. But I mean, trying and failing is probably the best yeah, advice absolutely. ever. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, look, um, we should probably just try and jam out on, on something else. I loved, okay. I loved hearing you sing. I don't know if there's anything else that you can remember the words to that we could kind of do a little bit of. Okay. Um, these are super guitars as well. I don't know, again, we'll put links below where you can find out more about these. From what I understand, it's a pretty small French kind of custom builder. So these aren't the kind of guitars you're gonna see in shops. I think you just gotta pick up the, the phone or email them and build your dream guitar with them if you want to, but it's very, very nice indeed. Yes. Um, it's lovely to see you again as well. You too. Another Thank five you. years. Will of you? course. Yeah, absolutely. I'll try my best to look the same as I do now. And if you could do the same, that would be great. Then no one will know that five years have even passed. <laughs> right. All the drama. Go and see uh, Tora on tour or go and listen to one of her albums. That would be marvellous. Links will be below. And yes, we shall see you when you're back. We ought to come and see you when you're in Guildford in September. That would be rude not to. Yeah, so. that would be rude not to. You're <laughs> very welcome. Okay. Right. Well, thank you very much for coming over. Thank you guys for watching. Let's go. See you next time. Hmm. So I can fall